Scott, uh, thank you for being here and welcome back to Beyond the Walls. Thanks, John. It's great to be with everyone as we uh, share together and, and blessings that have been ours so far in this worship, especially as we share together in this third Sunday of Easter. Have you ever noticed that, that the, in the Easter story contained in all four Gospels, the gospel writers reflect a different purpose in what Jesus sends the disciples into the world to do. In Matthew, Jesus sends the disciples to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them all that Jesus had taught. In Mark, Jesus breathes on, in, in Mark, excuse me, Jesus sends the disciples to proclaim the good news to the whole creation. And then in John's gospel, as Jesus breathes on them and then sends them as the Father had sent Jesus, and then Jesus tells Peter later on to go and feed God's people. But in Luke, there's something more distinct in what Jesus sends the disciples to do. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his, Jesus's name, to all nations. And then Jesus says to the disciples, you are witnesses of these things. I find it interesting that, that Luke feels compelled to name these specific acts that should be proclaimed, repentance and forgiveness. Maybe it's because Luke, the physician, cares for the welfare of human life. Maybe Luke knows from personal experience what repentance and forgiveness does to the human soul. Maybe Luke knows what, it's, what it is or what God has been doing since the beginning of life. As Walter Brueggemann reminds us, God has been taking our dismal modes of chaos and forming them into launching pads for new life. God is always bringing life out of death. So maybe that is why we celebrate multiple Easter Sundays in the Christian calendar. Maybe we need more reminders that Easter is not an event we encounter annually. Easter is always about a way of life and a way of being in the world. In this transformative story of the resurrection encounter, between Jesus and the disciples that Mark just shared with us is a snapshot of life filled with an array of emotions, fear, confusion, doubt, regret, shame, failure, embarrassment. But if you noticed what is not present in this image and encounter is the expression of anger chastisement, retribution, judgment, which would all be justifiable for Jesus, at, at least by our human standards. These were the companions and friends that ultimately failed and abandoned Jesus during his time of greatest need. But when Jesus entered the room, what he brought with him was the depth of God's love and expansive grace that invited the disciples to repent and to receive his forgiveness in those simple words he spoke. Peace be with you. In that moment, the powerful words that God spoke into the midst of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more, was now present in that room when Jesus said, peace be with you. You see, it was the same love, forgiveness, and grace those disciples had seen Jesus extend to others a thousand times during their time with Jesus. And now that same gift was being offered to them in their lowest moment of life, knowing they had failed as disciples. 
but the peace he offered flooded their lives with the healing that restores human wholeness. And then they were sent to be the gift and voice of repentance and forgiveness wherever they were found. Today, this story and witness has made its way to us, our lives. And we must consider what we will do with this message and gift. As Jesus met the disciples where they were at, locked in a room in fear and despair, the Easter story is a witness to us that Jesus meets us where we are in whatever condition of life we face. And then he invites us to move beyond where we are. And it begins with the invitation to repentance and the gift of forgiveness that flows from God's encompassing grace. I appreciated the testimony that Roger shared last week about how the Holy Spirit brought change in his life, change in how he understood, change in how he saw others with a repentant heart. The Holy Spirit invited Roger to see life in a new way. I'm confident that most, if not all of you, can look back on your own journey of life and give witness to how the gift of grace has extended, that was extended to you at a difficult time in your life. And now through that gift of forgiveness, God has moved you beyond wherever you were at. And today, you are a different person. Proclaim repentance and forgiveness. If we're honest, the idea of proclaiming repentance probably generates anxiety, fear, and even some strong resistance and avoidance within us. The word repentance conjures up those images of a people standing on street corners shouting to others about being saved from God's damnation. Along the way, some voices in Christianity decided they needed to reframe the concept of repentance to be about avoiding going to hell and damnation. And in the process, it became acceptable to go around judging other people and telling them that they were damned. And yet when we encounter Jesus in the stories of scripture, repentance was always about an invitation to experience new life. This is because the Greek word for repentance simply meant to turn another way. To turn and see another way made it possible to reorient one's life to the kind of life God first created in them. And when someone chose to let go and to look a new way, the gift of forgiveness opened the way for healing and wholeness to be experienced. But for us to talk about repentance and forgiveness, we cannot avoid the topic of sin, which I know makes us uncomfortable. We are created in the image of God, which God said was very good. But in our human nature, the fact is, we sin. But maybe the reason we avoid the topic of sin is because we tend to focus more on the effects of sin manifested in our outward behaviors rather than addressing the core of sin that happens when we make choices to be alienated from God and one another. Our community of Christ's basic beliefs remind us that God created us to be agents of love and goodness, yet we misuse our agency individually and collectively. We take the gifts of creation and of self and turn them against God's purposes with tragic results. Sin 
is the universal condition of separation and alienation from God and one another. We are in need of divine grace that allows reconcile and reconcile alone, divine grace that alone reconciles us with God and one another. The world and human life are complex. We have the capacity to do incredible things for the welfare of human life. And yet at the same time, we're capable of unconscionable acts that harm human welfare. This was the condition of life Jesus came to be in because he wanted to point people to see a new way. He faced the consequences of confronting the destructive power of the empire so people could see the justice and peace of God's kingdom that was coming near and the freedom of life it would bring. The mission of Jesus was not about coming to condemn individual lives by pointing out the behaviors manifested from their brokenness. He came to bring healing and wholeness to the brokenness of life, and at the same time to confront the systems of power and privilege that made it acceptable to treat others as less than because of race, gender, economic status, religion, orientation, and the list could go on. For Jesus, sin was about systems, attitudes, and behaviors that denied the worth of all people and impeded the presence of God shalom to be encountered on earth. Today, we are reminded in the Doctrine and Covenants section 163 that we continue to live in a complex world. And we hear these words, there are subtle yet powerful influences in the world, some even claiming to represent Christ, that seek to divide people and nations to accomplish their destructive aims. That which seeks to harden one human heart against another by constructing walls of fear and prejudice is not of God. Be especially alert to those influences lest they divide you or divert you from the mission to which you are called. Repentance and forgiveness are an essential gift of the resurrection. And in that, God demonstrated how big God's grace is. Proclaiming the essence of repentance and forgiveness is simply the invitation and offer for another to encounter new beginnings. And sometimes that is all people really need, is the invitation to a new beginning and the awareness that God's grace is big enough to make that possible. As I was reflecting on the nature of repentance and what it means in our lives, I was drawn back in my memory to a difficult time in my life. I had been approached by some in my congregation to serve as the pastor when the current pastor had to move. This would be my first time pastoring. And on top of this, the congregation was several months into a construction and remodeling project on a property we had purchased for our new church home. As I stepped into this new role and had to take on the leadership of this construction project, the congregation encountered a major problem that stopped our mission. At the six month point of this project and a couple hundred thousand dollars spent, we were notified by the local government officials that they had made a mistake. Zoning provisions did not allow for establishing a church on the property. That message to all of us felt like a punch in the gut that literally took our breath away. In a fractional moment, our hopes, dreams, and deep yearnings vanished and were replaced by thoughts of anger, 
resentment, injustice, and a sense of being lost. I went to the government officials to try to work through this problem, but they continued to deny our request. In frustration, we hired an attorney to address the conflict through the legal system. And over the pursuing six months, we were at a standstill and our property and building sat empty and no further work was allowed. In my rebellious attitude, I encouraged the congregation to meet at the property because we needed to exercise our faith in prayer. So each Sunday evening, we met at the property and we prayed. With self-righteous attitudes, we prayed that God would change the minds of those officials and allow us to plant the church in that location. For weeks, we dedicated ourselves to prayer. And then one evening during our prayer gathering, a young woman stood and simply prayed, God, please help us learn what you want us to learn from this situation. And may we be faithful to what you seek from us. In that moment, the room went silent. And then one finally stood and began to ask God to change his heart and attitude. And then another and another. And that prayer of this young woman, it changed our attitude, our perspective, and our behavior. No longer did we pray for God to change the minds and attitudes of the officials. Our prayers focused on how God was seeking to change our lives and use our lives, even if it meant we could not be the presence of the church in that community. In the words of that young woman, a spirit of repentance enveloped us and forgiveness is what we experienced and how we felt towards the officials and what God felt towards us. Three months later, three, so this prayer changed our lives. I received a notice from the government officials that we could continue our project and establish a church on the property in that neighborhood. To this day, that experience stands as a defining moment in my life and what the gift of repentance and forgiveness brings in our journey towards human wholeness. So in the story that Luke shares, the disciples come to recognize Jesus by his hands and feet. But Jesus did not want to be known strictly by his hands and feet. He wanted to be known for who he really was and what he was about. And then he sent those disciples to proclaim the invitation to new life that they saw Jesus offering every day of his life. As Henry Nowen reminds us, Jesus became like us so that we might become like him. Again, in Doctrine and Covenants section 163, we hear these prophetic words to the church, but more specifically to each of our lives. Jesus Christ, the embodiment of God's shalom, invites all people to come and receive divine peace in the midst of the difficult questions and struggles of life. Follow Christ in the way that leads to God's peace and discover the blessings of all of the dimensions of salvation. Generously share the invitation, ministries, and sacraments through which people can encounter the living Christ who heals and reconciles through redemptive relationships in sacred community. The restoring of persons to healthy or righteous relationships with God, others, themselves, and the earth is at the heart of the purpose of your journey as a people of faith. Today, 
you are witnesses of what God did through Jesus. But when Christ shows up where life needs the gift and invitation to experience repentance and forgiveness, don't be surprised that he will look like you because you are the ones now sent to be the living expression of God's grace and love wherever you are found. And God's eternal love continues to bring new life out of death. And that, my friends, that is good news. Amen. Thank you.